Today, I'm going to teach you about actions, a powerful new feature in Pickaxe that lets your chatbots and forms communicate with other pieces of software on the internet. A really easy way to think about actions are they are labeled buttons that pickaxes have been trained to push that then cause things to happen on other pieces of software. So for example, there is a Slack action. And when your chatbot pushes this, a message will be sent to a Slack channel that's already been configured. There is a send email to a user action. When your chatbot pushes this button, in an email is sent with whatever the chatbot sends to it. And there are even actions that return things, like this Dolly action. So when the chatbot pushes this button, it'll send information over to Dolly. Dolly will send information back, in this case an image, and your chatbot will render it. So today, I'm going to show you how to set up a few actions. You can also create your own actions, but that's a more advanced capability. And for now, the easiest thing to do is to connect existing actions. We are adding new ones all the time. So let's go through a couple of them. To begin, you'll start, like all pickaxes, in the builder. And you'll go over to the Act tab. Here you'll see the, connect, the actions you've already connected. We have none. And you'll see all the existing community actions that you can connect. So let's try sending the use, connecting this send summary email to user. So we'll simply click, click Connect. So what we have here is a trigger prompt. This is the guidelines for when the bot should use this action. This is the sort of label that we're putting on the button. So the chatbot will read this and kind of get an idea of when it should use this action and how. So the default is when a conversation appears to have finished, ask the user what their email is. Once they've gotten, use the action to send a summary to the user. Perfect. So we click to connect. It's that simple. We see that it's on here. We can turn it off. But let's uh, turn it on. Now let's quickly show you how this works. It's very simple. We're going to make a, the world's simplest chatbot. Ask the user the following questions um, one by one. What is your name? What is your profession? What is your email? Then you're done. So let's test it out. What's your name? My name is Joey Pasta. I am a pasta chef. What's your email? My email is mike at pickaxeproject.com. So it senses that the conversation is over and it is sending a email. You know an action is running when you see this moving little circle. And it's been sent. So now let's go check my email and see if it's been sent. And here we go, conversation summary. Um, it comes from updates at mail.studio. Hello, you just had an interaction. Here's your summary. And this is kind of a lame summary, admittedly, but it's kind of a lame chatbot. So we can always go into here and we could start messing around with this and we could go into the trigger prompt and explain when to use it. For example, let's go back over here. We can edit the action and say when the user says bingo um, and given you given them your their given you their email, use this action to send it. So now I've created this trigger word bingo. So we can start the conversation again. Hi, I'm Joey Pasta. I'm a pasta chef. I'm a past chef. Uh, Mike at pickaxeproject.com. Bingo. And now the action's been triggered. So my trigger is a little bit silly, but this is just to show you, to demonstrate that you can actually in create a lot of control over these actions all with natural language prompting. So now let's connect another one. So we'll clear this conversation. Let's turn off this one and pick a new one. How about PDF generator? So this allows the user to generate a PDF. The PDF will be generated from HTML. Great. 
So I've now connected this action and we'll say when, um, if the user asks for a report, generate a PDF with all the questions and their answers. So let's try this out. Hi, I'm Joey Pasta. I am head chef of a pasta restaurant. Uh, what's your email? JoeyPasta at JoeyPasta.com, of course. Generate a report. And now that I've said this, it is running the action, so it's sending the information of the conversation over to the PDF uh, generator code, which is elsewhere on the internet, and it has generated this action. So now if we click this, we are over here to the world's simplest PDF. And this PDF is kind of simple because the information is very simple, right? And you can control and influence what this PDF looks like again by configuring the action and your prompt with natural language. Just explaining what you want it to do. Let's connect another one. So we'll go over here and we'll turn off the PDF generator one. And now let's pick the generate a dolly image. This one's gonna look a little bit different and you'll see why. With this one, in addition to the trigger prompt, it's asking me for my OpenAI API key because this is gonna to connect to my OpenAI account and use my OpenAI account to generate the image. So I'm gonna quickly paste in my API key, hit connect, and here we go. It's now connected. And we can even just try to continue this conversation. Let's say, generate me an image of me, Joey Pasta. And it is now running the Dolly action. Here we go. Now this is good, but this isn't really what Joey Pasta looks like. It doesn't match the vision in my head. So I'm actually gonna edit the action and uh, the image should be uh, Lego style. It should look like a Lego figure. We're gonna update and now let's get what Joey Pasta looks like. Generate an image of me, head chef Joey Pasta in my pasta shop. And now it's gonna run my newly configured action. So this time it should be a slightly more accurate portrait of what Joey Pasta the pasta entrepreneur looks like. Let's take a look. And this is spot on. This is exactly what Joey Pasta looks like. And that's the power of actions. Now, you'll see there's a lot more here. Some of them are as simple as the sending emails and PDF generators, and some of them, like the DALI, will require an API key or a little bit more setup. Let's take a look at a couple more advanced ones. I'll let Nathaniel take this part over. And there's a couple different ways we can connect a Zapier webhook. I have another video where I went through the process of showing you how to build from scratch that Zapier webhook. What I'm gonna show you today is how to connect the existing Zapier webhook action, which will be much easier and uh, more accessible. So uh, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just go ahead and find the basic Zapier webhook action, which you should be able to find in the community actions, and click connect. Now you could clone this action, um, which might be cool if you wanna make some more variations. But for now, what we're going to do is just go over to Zapier and we're gonna create a webhook and we will uh, choose an event and we'll just say catch hook and Zapier will uh, take a moment here to, um, and we'll just skip that and, okay, so now Zapier has given us this link to this webhook. We will go ahead and paste that in here. And then in this area, we can say when we want it to trigger this webhook and what type of information we want it to convey. So what I might say is, um, you know, when the user says they want to buy something, ask them for their name. 
then send that name through this webhook. Okay, so with that, we can click connect and this should be set up for us. As we can see, it's up here in connected actions. I can start my conversation by saying hello. And um, maybe I'll say something that's not related to buying, like what color is the sky? Okay, and maybe now I'll say I would like to buy some socks. Ah, it wants my name. Okay, well, my name is Nathaniel. And we can see it's gone ahead and um, it's sending my name. So now it's going to move on with the conversation and you can use prompt engineering to figure out exactly how you want that conversation to continue. But if we go over to Zapier and we click test trigger, we can see that we got one request and that request had uh, my name, Nathaniel, right there. And so if we were to continue to build this tool in Zapier, we could use that information to do all kinds of stuff in the world. So hopefully this is a helpful little tutorial on how to connect a, an existing action, specifically a Zapier webhook. And um, happy prompting.